Anti-clock has never been screened in the UK before tonight. Okay. That's it. Can you explain a little bit about why a film that I think is quite ahead of its time in its use of surveillance footage and its kind of sense of kind of paranoia, why has that film been so hard to see? You know, it's never been out in video. I don't think it was released in DVD until maybe 2011 or something like that. Uh, why has it been so difficult to see? Well, I, I think that's entirely my own fault um, because I was spoiled. I took the film, I don't know what made me take it to America first, but I did. And I felt nervous about England and that film. But then I've always felt nervous about England and films. Uh, so we had such an incredible reaction in, in America for it. Um, the major magazines went for it. Newsweek magazine wrote a full page about it. And it won prizes all across the United States. And it took... It was just incredible. I couldn't believe that... It, which a film I, I knew, of course, to be difficult. Um, but I, I didn't make it to be difficult. It, it wasn't deliberate. It just was the way it turned out. But it, it was such a success in America. And then I had... A, premier, a sort of lunch with a, a great hero of mine, Louis Mao, French director, in New York. And he said, Jack, you're born in the wrong country. If you'd been born in my country, you would never stop shooting. You'd never been worrying about how you find money to make a picture. You would just never stop working. But in England, you're living in the wrong culture, and uh, they're not, they're not going to help you. So, when we left America, we'd had this incredible experience of showing it to the Americans everywhere, right across the States. And I got back to England, and the first week I took it to a couple of uh, distributors and got a very negative <laughs> response, as Louis Mal had predicted.